Hey, this is Barrett with Porta Keeper. Welcome back to the Porta Keeper YouTube channel. And this is part two of my DF83 experiment using the crew sifters. So in part one, we ground 18 grams of beans. I had it on about setting 50. You can check out my other video and it's more of a drip setting. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick sifter comparison using these crew sifters and what we're going to do is we're going to have it set between about two and six hundred. So according to this crew chart, you don't really want anything bigger than six hundred. You really don't want anything smaller than two hundred. And we do have all the screens for that. Two hundred is just extremely fine. So I'll set it up and we're going to start at six hundred. We're going to do six hundred, five hundred, four hundred, three hundred, two hundred. Um, to begin with, I've ground 18 grams of beans, or I haven't ground them, I've weighed, and we're just going to grind them real quick. Oop, I unplugged it. Let's plug it back in. And I will note that I used this grinder this morning. And I made a couple shots of espresso. I'll tell you the exact setting here in a second. Um, 20, 19, 18. I usually run it on between 20 and 18. Right now it's on 18. So I ran it this morning and this was pretty much the perfect size. We were getting a nice extraction, uh, about 30 second extraction about 34 grams out 18 in, 34 out so i feel like this is dialed in at least for this bean so i'm considering this a nice espresso bean i'm going to go ahead and set up the crew sifter so that we can just sift this out into its various sizes okay we're going to do it just like we did in part one i have the 600 on the top the 500 right below it and then anything smaller than 500 will go into the bottom layer and we'll just do two at a time so Let's try to get all the grounds out, all the fines out. Kind of have some issues with them sticking to the sides anyway. So remember, we don't really want much bigger than 600 and anything much smaller than 200. There's always going to be grounds that fall into that category. But in my opinion, this DF83 is definitely more of an espresso grinder. Their burrs made for espresso, so. Okay, so here's our first layer of 600, and what we're going to do is try to get them into this funnel without losing much. We're going to weigh it out. Some of the particles do get stuck in the screen. It's just kind of part of it, so... I don't think it's like enough to really change the trended result so to start off I think you can see it pretty well um, larger than 600 we have about 2.2 grams out of the 18 grams so I'm going to try to do a little bit cleaner this time we're gonna say 2.2 grams we'll go ahead and say Setting 18, DF83, and then, so we will lose some because they do get stuck to the side. We can add it all up at the end, but let's put this off the side and We're going to go move on to 500. I want to try to get kind of these fines that get stuck to the side. They should already be sifted. I just want to get that stuff off the edge. So we're going to consider this smaller than 600. 
but bigger than 500. So let's weigh that out. Okay, we're at about four grams. So we'll write four and dump that off to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the screens. Okay, we went ahead and changed the top to 400 and the bottom to 300. So let's sift these out. This is the remaining grounds that came off that bottom tray. And we're just gonna sift it just like we did before. All right, you can tell that we're getting into where kind of the middle of the bell curve is. This is the 400 mark and we're going to weigh it out real quick again without trying to make a mess. So, so far I'm, I'm feeling like it's a pretty nice bell curve. It's not going to be a very odd distribution. So we're at about 6.4 grams. We're going to dump this off the side. This is the 400 level. And this is the 300. Read that. We're going to try to get all the fines off the side. Then we'll go ahead and do the 200 just to sift out the ultra fines. Okay, here's the 300. I don't even think that there's going to be much in the 200. We might just call this good because there's just really fine dust, smaller than the 300 level. So 300, we're at about 3.8 grams. Let's go ahead and just do the 200 as is. So this is everything smaller than 300 and there's really not much left. So these are the fines. There's quite a few, but it's you need them for espresso, so. so we're at about one gram at the two hundred. So if you do some quick math and you add all these up, it wasn't lost in the grinder so much as it was just like on the table. You can see there's just little bits of coffee grounds, but we're at 17.4 grams out weighed. Wow, I can't write behind this camera. So you just have to realize that some of that is just the skew that you're going to get from some of these like real fine stuck in the corner like this one I didn't really clean up very good so there there's quite a bit more if you look at this one it's not so bad but you get a little bit of loss when you use that crew sifter uh, it's just the way that I'm trying to visually show how this grinder is um, distributing the ground so 
Just going over it again, we have 600, 500, 400, 300, 200. And really, if you look, it is a nice curve. So this is like the bottom of the curve, then it's going up. Here's your peak, then it's going back down. And then there's the bottom of your curve. So if you notice, these two are fairly close, these two are fairly close, and that's the middle. So. We could say 600, 500, 400, 300, 200. So I feel like that's a pretty dang good distribution and really what we're looking for in espresso. So as you change this dial and move it bigger and smaller, at least within the, the espresso range, all it's doing is shifting this curve so that you're getting like slightly larger ground. So if you need slightly coarser, you might be like in that 450 range that we can't really uh, measure because we don't have sifters for that. But if that's where your espresso needs to be, all it's doing is it's just shifting this peak back and forth. So I'm actually very pleasantly surprised with the findings here. And what we're gonna do next is, do the same thing, except with these red speed burrs from SSP. So these are DF83 burrs, and really what I'm wanting to do is do a comparison between the stock burrs for espresso, and then these DF83 burrs that are really gonna be great for espresso. Now, if you go back and look at part one of this video, I feel like the curve was quite, it was okay. Um, the part that I didn't really care for was it seemed like there's quite a few fines for a pour over. Um, all the pour over that I've made with this grinder so far has been just amazing. So it's really hard to complain too much about it. If you're wanting that like ultra crisp, clean pour over, um, you probably need to go with like a different burr set, kind of like I have in this you have 64 e now this grinder is 100 percent set up for espresso but you could take those burrs and put it in like a normal df64 i actually use a didding 804 for my really crisp and clean pour over so i think this makes a very nice not boring middle of the road awesome drip but it's also been making some just over the top espresso as well so I compare this to my Atom 75. I feel like the Atom probably has a little bit more clarity. It's hard for me to explain, but I really do feel like the Atom has a little bit more clarity. It really depends upon the bean, but I, I traditionally use like a lighter roast bean, um, anywhere from middle of the road chocolatey to quite fruity. Um, I feel like the Atom 75 and the DF83, they make really good, those fruity beans. But if you want to go next level, getting something like this with the um, unimodal SSP burrs, the multi-purpose burrs. Same beans, smaller grinder, but these multi-purpose just really make those like Ethiopians that are real fruity to scream. Um, Everything else that's just like your more traditional, let me grab it. Just a medium roast espresso blend. This DF83 just really punches hard in terms of flavor. So that's my comparison between the drip and the espresso burr settings and just the particle distribution. So one last visual. Uh, let me know if you got any questions. Next will be the SSP as I mentioned. So make sure to subscribe. We're always trying to do some new content. Need to be doing some videos on this new Kaleido roaster that I got. I've been using it. So make sure to check back. Thanks for watching.